The Melon Man here. I'm back again. It's been a little while since I've had a, an opportunity to interview uh, someone a couple of weeks. So uh, I am excited about this really wonderful opportunity. What's kind of kind of fallen in my lap tonight. I've got Dr. Chris MD. Uh, Dr. Chris is a medical doctor. That's kind of hard to find uh, a, a medical doctor that is aware, uh, kind of awake and aware about uh, uh, natural healing and raw food healing and um, uh, energetic healing and, and, and how to heal your body uh, without medications, I suspect. This is the first time I'm getting a chance to talk with Dr. Chris MD. So uh, I'm going to be learning a lot about what he does. I know he runs Compass Vital Health. And I know he does uh, corporate wellness. So he's, he's helping corporations to increase productivity by making sure that uh, their, their uh, clients and customers and obviously their employees are at their best because a, a happy, healthy employee is going to be much more productive and have much less sick days and, and uh, be able to work longer hours and be working longer hours with a, a smile on their face. So. Yeah, Wouldn't that be better to have that, right? Uh, Dr. Chris MD, this is awesome. Please tell me, sir, um, what's your background in MD? What does that mean? Yeah, I think it goes down to when I was about 18 years old and I needed to make a decision about a career, I wanted to use or choose something that's kind of ultimate and I want to help people in the biggest way I can. So I decided I'll go the route of being a doctor, study, did very well at university, got into my first practice, first went to the military, did underwater medicine, did a couple of cool things and then went into private practice, solo, young guy on my own, I tackle a town, I'm the only doctor in town, I did very well there, a little coastal town in South Africa. And I did quickly realize that, wow, it's not really, you know, my pen is not magic. I can't write all these prescriptions and heal all these people. It's like, there's something wrong here with medicine. They don't get the results that you think you're going to. And um, anyway, so I've always had a penchant for like holistic, integrative, call it complementary medicine. Um, and what I've discovered lately is functional medicine, which is very, very cool. It aligns very much with what I want to do. So I've been a very um, busy and active doctor in surgery, in medicine, in maternity. I've delivered thousands, more than a thousand babies, seen more than a million patients in my day. Lost my wife, unfortunately, uh, about, she, she died from breast cancer about five years ago, four to five years ago. And I realized this is the life that I really had to save, you know, the most important life to me. And I couldn't, I was I stood with my hands tied. We lived a good life. We... Um, we you know had enough of everything but we never paid attention i mean like we drink good whiskey we eat good food but never paid attention to these things that can potentially in your environment switch on your genes and have a you know have a bad outcome um and activate your genes to uh, you know to express themselves and i decided well i'm gonna pack up practice close down two guys took over my one practice and I set off to, um, at this point, I've already practiced in South Africa for 20 years. I worked in Australia for a year. I worked in Ashford, Kent, which is south of London in, in the UK. I worked for almost a year and I went to Canada to uh, re-qualify as a medical doctor and surgically and medically uh, and a family practitioner. And I worked there for 15 years. And at that point, I lost my wife. And I thought, I'm packing all this up. I'm going to go look for answers and do something big, like on the internet, a virtual practice where I can reach millions of people and bring the message to them and really open their eyes to show them how they can take responsibility and that they are actually responsible for their own destiny in their medical outcome. Um, that's kind of just the background. Okay. Amazing. Amazing, sir. Fantastic. So, so you, you, you did the whole traditional uh, medical practice and found that, uh, you know, it was just basically filling prescriptions and not really getting to, to the healing, right? Yes, exactly. You see a patient gets like a run 
things start going wrong with him, with him and his family. He's in there with the one disease, he's in there with the next disease. You just fix the one thing, the next thing happens. It's sort of something happens to him in his environment and in his spiritual, social level that triggers the disease and makes him prone. And then, you know, the guy just has a, a run of bad luck, so to speak. But, uh, and I realized thoroughly that medicine, uh, the money in medicine is where the pharmaceutical companies, they research and invent um, and, uh, you know, design things that are treatments. They're not interested in cures because there's no money if there's only one tablet in the box and your headache's gone forever. So they, this is where they focus on, nothing wrong with that, but doctors follow suit and they just prescribe these things. So you quickly become a guy that's in a hurry. You only have 12 minutes for a patient and not that, I was not never like that, but then the, the patient said headache, the doctor really thinks he's got a prescription for the headache and does not look into the, the holistic view of the patient, all the systems and really ask a little bit around and see what's upstream, you know, what's what went wrong that his body is manifesting the headache. And then often patients go a long while before they really, the thing comes to a front and then the patient says, oh, I've got this bad thing wrong with me. We should have found this out earlier. Anyway, so medicine is clearly that they treat symptoms, they might make you feel better. Uh, they don't have, they don't look upstream for the source or the root cause. That's not what it's designed for. And then very often, if you treat something with a solution that is not the base solution, then the problem, the, the solution becomes a problem. So there's allergy to medication, there's side effects, more medicines follow and so on and so on. It's just like a vicious circle. And unfortunately, the system set up that everybody pays or contributes a little bit to the medical insurance and then if you're sick it's your turn to be sick you get everything for free so to speak because it's kind of cost subsidized and people would go to the doctor because of course it costs him nothing and he's a clever guy they wouldn't go elsewhere and come out of pocket unless they've tried for months and months to solve it with a doctor and then suddenly oops i've got to go elsewhere now because this guy is not giving me an answer hopefully by that time they haven't cut the things out and threw away your organs like they often do and then it's kind of irreversible so it's just a you know, it's like a viewpoint on medicine. It's not what it often projects itself to the public. And uh, it is kind of in a, you know, a setup like that. The pharmaceuticals has the money, the medical insurance pays, the doctor comes with these magic answers and the quick fixes. And the patient needs to be responsible and say, I'm, I need to decide about my health and take full responsibility, not just doc fix this, doc fix that, because doc will always fix the thing for you so to speak. Okay. I never speak these things, uh, but today I just thought I'd entertain you with this little story. <laughs> Nobody else can fix you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody else can know what's wrong with you. You're the one Thank that's you. creating your illness. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, but you know what? It has to be said from a doctor. It, no, nobody else can say it. Yes, yes, and I say it with respect. If anybody else say it, it's kind of in opposition to this, to the system. But I am one of them. I speak for myself too, and I've come to better insight. I was looking for answers the last two years since I closed my practice and setting up the virtual. And I've bumped into this kind of guys. There's a bunch of guys, about a thousand of them. It's, oh wow, this is my people. They sing the same song. They think exactly like me. They help people. They even help each other. That we like. We like, a, you know, like a tribe. We help each other so much. Where there's a little bit in the medical field of don't come near my practice and come and spy what I'm doing. It's like it's my patients. Don't touch yeah, my patients. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> yeah, I met this bunch of functional medicine doctors in America, and functional medicine has been going on since the 1700s. It's not a new thing for 200 oh, years. Cool. It's been so around, but... How do you get to get find a functional medical practitioner? Yeah, you can Google that and they also, a lot of them work online virtually. They can reach you anywhere. I'm doing functional, functional medicine. medicine. Functional we, medicine. Functional yeah, medicine. Awesome. Thank you We look at the body that. like systems and then we find out the root cause what's wrong and we correct the environment and the root cause with natural products, only no harsh chemicals. And your body, guess what? It's magic. It heals itself if you just allow it to. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, wow. Cool. That is, that is so excellent to hear that and uh, to get that understanding. Now, uh, what aspect of um, functional medicine are, are you then uh, basically sharing? You know, what's, what's your, your major focus then? Yeah, so I, I think like in a, in a certain system all these years to make a diagnosis, take a history, examine a patient, do it 
do tests and then come to a conclusion. But I found like this is you need to find the root cause of things. And uh, this is not a new thing. About 2,500 years ago, <clears throat> we now call him the father of medicine, Hippocrates. Yes. <clears throat> he was a Greek, a Greek philosopher that uh, lived a few hundred years before Christ even. Yes. And he was also uh, a Greek physician and philosopher. And he, in those days, said a few. You know, we concluded a very important things. He said one of the things is that um, all disease stem from the gut. It's almost like where the rubber meets the road, your environment and your body come in contact with one little cell layer in your gut and whatever bad things in your environment will absorb easily and damage this little layer and go into your body and wreak havoc. Whereas your skin is, a, is a also the exposure to the environment, but it's a couple of... 10, 15 layers thick, you can hang a guy up by his skin and things don't damage and get through the skin that easy. But the gut is like, it's, you know, open territory. Things can just invade you. It's like the back door. So uh, you have to, what I was disabused of very quickly is you don't fix the thyroid and fix the hormones and fix the joints. You have to go down to basics. You have to, where the rubber meets the road, you have to fix the gut. Yes. So that the reason being that you got this body, it's like a Mercedes-Benz car. You, go, you have a Mercedes, you never see one broken down next to the road. I never see a broken Mercedes. Why? Because when you buy the car, it's expensive. You pay for like a maintenance package. Every 5,000 or 10,000 case you drive it in, they cost, they charge you nothing, but they look at everything on the computer. If something is slightly worn, they replace it with a brand new part. No secondhand stuff, no waiting till things break. They only use the best quality materials. So what with the body, now we're eating junk food, we're eating you know, all these toxins and things and we expect our body to be in good shape from all these broken building blocks. We have to go and handle the environment with the bad stuff. We have to kill the parasites inside your gut because they like the seagulls living on the, on the city uh, dump heap or the exactly. city. Exactly, yes. And then yes. we can fix the little microbiomes, the little good guys, the minions that's supposed to do all the work and digest your food for you and manufacture vitamins. And your immune system is around the gut. That's where it's supposed to be. We never knew this until a few years ago. It's like uh, the castle, the wall of the castle. So that's where 80% of your immune system sits, called the gut-associated lymphoid tissue or gulp. And the immune system die, uh, calms down and becomes normal and things your body can heal itself if you do that. So even if you suffer from a thyroid, we have to go down to the gut, clean the parasites, reset and rebuild the gut and the lining. Take bad things out the environment, like fluorine, uh, fluoride, and uh, mercury and stuff, and then we can give you supplements for the thyroid, and it will magically get fixed. But if we just give you stuff for the thyroid, it's like you, your garden is a mess, and you come there with grass seed, you're sowing grass seed all over, you think you're going to have a lawn. And please, no, it's not going to happen. You need to fix all the systems. Awesome. So what you're saying is the body heals itself? Yeah, the body is an innate ability to heal itself. And whenever you have symptoms, it's really the body's attempt to try and heal itself. And it's kind of fighting with things and causing symptoms or dis-ease or uneasiness. And we, we want to kill those little diseases. We don't want the pain. We don't want the sweating. We don't want the whatever. But the body's trying to heal and we're suppressing it to heal. Yeah. So we, we get a symptom and uh, it's actually a healing symptom. It's uncomfortable. So we go to the doctor and take a pill, which then puts our body more into toxicity, which stops the healing and yep. stops, stops the headache or stops the, uh, the pimples that are coming out of my skin or stops yes. the, the sore throat that I'm getting or stops the diarrhea that I'm getting. But that's really my body trying to clean itself out. And I stop yes. it by taking the medication and stop the detoxification uh, symptoms. Yeah. Which I think I'm healed. I've actually stopped the healing process. Yes, yes. So let, let look at a simple example. A very common one is people have high blood pressure suddenly and the doc says, oh, this is bad. But your blood, you have a blood pressure because your blood, your heart needs to pump the blood to the cells, to the body, to take oxygen and to take food and also to take back the carbon dioxide, the bad gases and all the breakdown products, the toxins. So if your body is toxic, you're unfit, you don't get enough oxygen or exercise and you're eating bad food full of poisons, the body senses that the cells are not happy. They need more oxygen. They need to take the toxins away. So up goes the blood pressure, more pumps the blood. And we say, no, that's bad. And we push it down. So we're kind of curbing the body's attempt to try and give more nutrients. So we're, ki we're killing ourselves even more yeah. by taking the drugs. 
Yeah, and then the doctor gives the guy like a blood pressure medicine and a week, a month later he comes back, the doctor says, your blood pressure is good. Patient says, I'm not feeling so good. He says, no, just carry on with the medicine, trust me. And another month later he comes back, the blood pressure is up again. The body's still trying to fix it. So the doctor says, no, no, we go double dose. The patient said, I'm already oh, feeling Oh my God. The guy dies from all those toxins and, and cellular inflammation. Doc says, you see, it's dangerous to have blood pressure. You know, where you get the idea. I'm, I'm saying this respectfully, but this is how it kind of goes. Patients don't have understanding. So all you must do is get more exercise, you know, eat better food, and detox. Yes, yes, but, yes. But it's body's eating what it wants to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Dr. Chris MD. Yes. Yeah. Get Trump out of there. Get Trump out of there. Put in Chris MD. Yeah. The body heals itself, Chris. I love it. So, so what what are the what's the foundation? What's the foundation of healing a body naturally, Chris? Yes, so we must first maybe go one little step back. Uh, I always say, you know, if you want to know what the weather is like today, you can go www.weathercom.com and in password, blah, blah, and it says to you, it's uh, cloudy. But the easiest thing is to stick your head out the window and see what the weather's like. So same with health. Let's just stick your head out the window and look, have a look. If you look at 50 years ago, 1960, 2%, that's one out of 50 Americans had a chronic disease, which means the docs say there's something wrong with you. You need medicine, but I don't know how to fix you. That's a chronic disease. Today, 50 years later, 52%, more than half. So one guy has disease, one guy not. Healthy disease, healthy disease, healthy disease. If you look out the window, that's the score. What has happened between in the last 50 years that every second guy has a disease? He's got some condition that the dog's treating him for and all worried, but he's not able to fix him. 50% have a disease and the other 50% are fat. Yeah, and they're probably going to get a disease. <laughs> and they're going to get a disease. Yeah. <laughs> So if you look, yeah, okay. So, so, so we very quickly look and we see my genes didn't change. I got it from my grandmother, my grandfather. My genes are the God, same. Genes, oh my gosh. So we can't blame the genes. Number two, I eat the same food, you know, bacon and eggs and lettuce and, and vegetables as I did 50 years ago. But our environment changed and the stuff they put on the food changed and the quality of the food changed. So and 30, 30 years of eating bacon and sausage and eggs yeah. adds up and it creates oh, yeah. a problem after a while. Yeah. So we're kidding ourselves with toxins. We have to clean up our act and put the Wi-Fi router a little bit further away from you and sleep three foot away from your cell phone. And, uh, you know, don't use the microwave oven because you're making free radicals. <laughs> you're like firing up your food. Yes, you're nuking your yes. food. Those things. So we have to. My program works like this. You asked me about, about the health, how to heal. So basically, first of all, you have to have a plan. You must do it in steps and stages. So I have programs online. I enroll people and then I say, okay, we kill the parasites. Those are the big worms, the small worms, the cellular organisms like amoebas and stuff and microcellular. Once we get all that junk killed, now we can- Okay, first of all, first of all, just before you go any further with that, yeah. parasites. H how many people have parasites, Dr. Chris? I would say the quick answer is everybody has it. Um, yes, I think so. Mm. So look everybody for Everybody has it. Yeah. So look for yourself. It's not just worms. It's also amoeba, gardia, little micro... Microscope. Fungus, yeast, candida, the, all, all sorts of different parasites at different levels. You know, yeah. some very bad, some not as bad, but bugs, uh, you know, Everyone's been on the antibiotics. Everyone's yeah, exactly. been on the uh, or on the steroids. Um, well, you know, cat and a dog. everyone has a cat and a dog, and and has been exposed to uh, you know all of the all of this stuff. So we, yeah. we, all, we all have it. We all have it. Yeah, exactly. And then you eat sushi, or you uh, you eat pork. Pork has about ten to twelve different parasites and eggs in the meat. And people say, I don't do any of that stuff. And well, guess what? A fly Chicken. comes. A fly comes and sits on your food on the table. Where did it come from? You were sitting on the oh dog. Oh my gosh! The chicken, the chicken is the, the, the chicken yeah. is factory farmed. It's filled with it's filled with all sorts of disease. All of yeah. those farmed animals that are in such close proximity and on top of each other, the bacteria is insane in those things. They're yeah. all fe they're all fed steroids to manifest to manifest bigger chickens, but it manifests more bugs and more more yeast and, and more overgrowth of, of candida and, and 
pestilence as well too. So now we're, we're eating the chicken, like. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about genetically modified organisms, GMOs or pesticides and insecticides. So you can see the broad spectrum of. Antibiotics of, or fluoride or yeah. chloride or, or, or even like the way that the animals are being killed and the emotional yeah. stuff that we're getting from those animals. So how much sickness and illness and disease is in our bodies? Yeah, so I always, I, I must tell you something very interesting. I thought, well, you know, if they factory farm these animals, they're in a confined space, it's very dirty, they get sick, they get antibiotics, poor things, you know, they're doing their best, they're giving them antibiotics so they can be a little better. I was disabused the other day, you know why they give them antibiotics? They all get antibiotics and the FDA approved this like 35 years ago because they want to cause dysbiosis and leaky gut syndrome and... Uh, you know, they upset their gut so that they can absorb all this junk and get super fat, super fast, but also super unhealthy so that they can sell them for more money. So they, they cause the, the antibiotics is to cause, uh, you know, gut uh, inflammatory bowel disease so that they can become fat and get more money. What so you're kind of saying, Dr. Chris, is that somebody is like intentionally doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's all about the money, you see. And they don't want to kill us, but we do get killed in the process. <laughs> you know, like people, one out of six people die from a heart attack. One out of six get cancer. So it's kind of bad where things have gone to. And to fix it now, we need to know what the score is. So I do the programs, we clean your gut, and I only use natural products. Across the planet, the products that have worked over the last thousand years that kill parasites, 30 of them we put together in, th in four different capsules for the big worms, the small worms, the microscopics. And... In medicine, you have a worm, flat worm, or you have a round worm, and you go to the doctor, he gives you mabendazole or vermox specifically for that worm. It doesn't have something to cover the field. So you take all these tablets for the worms, very good, but what happens, it does not kill the eggs, and the worm lays a few hundred thousand eggs a day. So in two weeks, three weeks later, these eggs hatch, you got your worms back, thank you very much. So our stuff softens the eggs, kills the eggs, kills the parasites. You take it for 40 days, and then all your parasites are dead. Now your gut is kind of balancing out a bit and now we can reset the gut, grow the good guys. Uh, our grandfathers and great grandfathers, they didn't have fridges, refrigerators where they can put things in the kitchen. So they had to preserve it. And guess how they reserved it? They preserved it by fermentation. So they put a lot of good germs in there and the bad guys can't touch it. So they would uh, make kimchi, they would make sauerkraut that's fermented. They would make salami that's fermented, yogurt's fermented, cheese is fermented. All these things were fermented. So then the good guys are sitting there and the bad guys can't attack. So then it lasts for a year until next season on the shelf. And we all stop eating that stuff. Yes, they make yogurt and they make um, sauerkraut, but go read on the bottle. It's pasteurized and preserved. They, kill all, they make all these wonderful germs and then they kill them and they put them on the shelf. So they have a shelf life. So we never get the good guys that come so close, but they kill them before we eat them. So you're going to make your own or go to the health food store and buy these natural, you know, the live organisms, the probiotics that your body needs to do all the jobs and, and get you healthy. Now, uh, I love it that you've got uh, some natural products that, that can help people to, to heal of these things. Uh, what, what kind of natural foods and natural protocols do you do in association with your, your products? Yeah, I've got two things to tell you. One is like super exciting. I'm leaving it for that. It's like wow stuff. The first one is this, is that you go and Google diets, you'll probably get a million hits in two seconds. You know, if you Google it, because it's Dr. Aitken's diet. Very good. Then it's the keto diet. Then it's the Mediterranean diet. Then it's the blue diet. Then it's... So what is this thing with diets? It's like there's not a diet that's perfect for men. Why not? Because your environment changes, the seasons change, your needs and stuff changes as it gets winter, summer, and cold and spring, and you travel to the North Pole, to the South Pole, sleep less, sleep more. So if you follow any exact diet protocol for longer than six months, you're probably going to do your body in. So yes, for a couple of months, you can follow something, but you always have to kind of judge what your body needs seasonally, what do you have a craving for, and then you go along with that. There's some good ways. Basically, your plate, you need to have like 20% of proteins, whether that's chickpeas or vegetarian stuff or chicken and beef and by good quality and 80% vegetables, greenish kind of vegetables, then you're doing okay. That's kind of the direction we need to go in. Uh, and so, why? so do you think, do you think more, more plant-based? Yes, I would say like I said, 80% plant-based, 20% animal-based. 
or protein based and your proteins can just be like uh, vegetable like tofu miso uh, chickpeas lentils you can do that stuff too you don't have to eat meat but it's a quick um, a quick assimilation of proteins for the body if you eat meat it's not always good because the meat is not grass fed it's not free range chickens it's like all factory farmed and they feed them with bad plant oils and uh, with maize and with uh, corn and corn syrup and stuff and margarine which is like they give the peas all this, this fatty plastic stuff to eat and they go all big and they make money so you got to kind of eat quality meat that's you know almost like organic otherwise you're just messing up your body with uh, you know with trans fats and hydrogenated oils and stuff broken pieces that you want to build a nice you know healthy body from it ain't going to work okay now so this what, what about uh, what about emptiness or do you recommend fasting is this good fasting is if you look at mother nature how we do you don't see like a monkey sitting eating six meals a day he eats and he runs around and he plays and then it gets dark soon and he goes to sleep and so you got to kind of i think the body's designed to wanting about 12 to 16 hours of fasting excuse me a day intermittent fasting a couple of days a week and other days not yeah. but not not three, four meals a day, plus tea time, plus no, snacks. Plus a bit no, less snack. no. Yeah. So, 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 le so less eating in a smaller eating window, more empty time. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I agree. It doesn't very feel much. good. The first few weeks don't feel good, but once your body adapts to this style and it makes yeah, it yeah. super, exactly. you know, off you go. And then the second and thing, I must tell you about still, but you can ask me questions, but the second major thing that I discovered, I will tell you soon. So yes, I went, uh, you already, yeah. you, you also mentioned exercise needs to be in there. Yes. Yes. The body needs to function and you need to move and you need to move a certain amount beyond your comfort level so that it keeps nice and fit. If you just do, you gotta, you gotta push yourself a little bit there. Otherwise you never get fit. You gotta go beyond yeah. the board, the border yeah. so it can adapt and be a little bit better in shape. So uh, yes. five days a week, you've got to do something like for half an hour. I like doing the things that I enjoy, like I kite surf, I ride my motorcycle in the off-road, I, I cycle. Uh, I also spend time in the gym, but it's not sitting there with weight in front of the mirror. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to do something, play a game of squash, play some tennis. I beat awesome, my awesome. Like, but, you know, that's fun and you're also exercising. Yeah. What about, uh, what about sunlight? What about grounding? What about uh, meditation? Are you, are you into any of this stuff? Yes. Yes. So there's a whole, I, I think that the answer in life is not to live 150 years long, like not, not a, a lot of years, but you have quality years as well. So you want to have, you measure health, not in terms of I'm not sick. So now that means I'm healthy. No, that's not, that is something else. Health needs to be measured in terms of functional, how functional I am and what do I get out of life? What do I achieve and how can I perform? How well do I feel spiritually, emotionally and physically? That is how you measure health. Yes, I'm in good shape. Not I don't have 10 diseases, so I'm in good shape. No, you're still in bad shape. Okay, then the next thing is um, grounding is as we operating and uh, and go through life and cutting the this flux of the earth because we're walking on the crust and it's a hot day and it's all humid and positively charged air particles our body i saw this in canada lots because it's kind of dry in the winter you touch a door that zaps you it shocks you because your body builds up static and, and charge to walk barefoot a couple of minutes a day is like nice because you can discharge the the bad uh, positive ions in the body mm. and so that's very cool to do to ground yourself um, do a little bit of exercise, avoid things that charge up the body. So, I mean, if you have to speak on the cell phone, yes, but kind of, if you sleep for eight hours, keep it three feet away from you. And in your office, don't put your freaking Wi-Fi router under your seat, put it six feet away in the other corner or in the next room so that you're not getting 5G's dosing yourself and that, you know, so that's kind of things that you must do. Meditation is good. I think there's better things in meditation. I don't run it down, but it's good to kind of be... I would rather say to kind of stop life for a few minutes a day and just kind of extrovert and look out and observe your environment and appreciate life and, and notice things. Otherwise, everything makes tends to introvert us. So we kind of introvert, we cave in and we have problems and we're going like a hamster in a wheel. You've got to get out of the wheel, take a walk, look around. You know, that's, I think, the, the powerfulness of meditation, not to have your eyes closed and look inside your head here. It introverts you more. I'm more like a guy that gets space, you know, 
find yourself, put out your anchor point, spiritually like expand that, that kind of stuff is very, very powerful. I see often patients crying in my office. You know what? I just take the lady or the guy by the hand and I say, come with me. We just walk around the building. I say, can you see that? Can you see that? Look at this. Look at that. They smile. They feel better. They're extrovert. Instead of sitting there with simply, oh, it's so bad. And I'm so sorry for you. And we all cry in the end. It's like, just get some space. You know, get, get out of your head. Kind of like, you know excellent, what I mean? Excellent. What about, what about uh, what's your take on or your position on religion? Religion is, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of a, almost like a political question in a way because there's many answers. Religion is, uh, is something that people must work out for themselves. It's, I think there's good things to say about religion. Uh, there's bad things to say about religion. I think the planet would be a much worse place if there wasn't religion in, in position because religion has an ethics and moral code for people. It's something they follow as a group. It's kind of like keep you in check. Uh, there's also bad things. I've been watching uh, uh, some, some movies on Netflix now just because it's very educational and, and, and revelationary. Like I'm watching Simon Bolivar who conquers South America and, and Venezuela like uh, 250, almost, yeah, t almost 300 years ago. And religion was a big control thing. You know, they control people badly and viciously with religion and kept them in check. And you don't want to keep people down. They must be able to you know, expand and exhilarate and excel in life. It's like not try to keep them down. So that's kind of the downside of some religions. Um, I think it's, every religion has like this reverence for a supreme being, you have, whether you call him Allah or Ra or God, it's like your own business, but you need to realize there's something that causes creation and it's an infinite, infinite kind of aspect. And you need to pay attention to that and join that and, and do your own creation and, you know, not just sit there for things to happen, your, your destiny, but you must create your path and you must be, you know, um, sort of rekindle your own godliness that you can like do big things and think beyond the box, you know, and like do amazing stuff with your life, not sit there like waiting for things to happen. That's kind of in a nutshell my, my take. We can speak for hours so, or something. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, but I mean, you, you, you think that there, there must be some supreme being and we all have access to it. And, you know, yes. you, can't, you can't be pinched into your religion and like the only way to reach to this, to yeah. this godliness is through my way. And, and nobody else has my way. Only I do because yes. I'm, you know, it, it, it's available to everyone. And yes. it's an, an infinite power that, that, you know, is available to us and, and it's and it's the healing magical power and yes. the creative ma magical force that's in all of our lives yes yes oh yes that's very important we can have another talk just about that one day it'll blow your mind i'm very <laughs> this kind of stuff now i must tell you about one big thing i discovered i made this like breakthrough awesome, awesome. so i'm looking it's like okay so what's wrong with the environment we've got things that come in contact with your skin and uh, radiant and beams and the second thing in the food that's riddled with junk and in the water, because everything rains, pollution picks it up, the rain, and brings it down the, the rivers into the pipes, and they pump it in your, in your water. And people drink bottled water, they think, okay, I'm drinking cool water. But there's no legislation or control on bottled water. 50% of bottled water, actually 38%, is just plain tap water that they run through a carbon filter and sell it to you for cheap. And then there's all these plastic molecules, like the microplastics. If you drink three bottles of water, bottles plastic a day, in one week, it's equal to eating one whole credit card, the amount of plastic that you're ingesting. And they're all hormones and xenoestrogens, and you get man boobs and stuff because you're eating all this crazy plastic. Never mind the pollution. There's already in the Atlantic, in, in, this, in the Pacific Ocean, there's plastic floating. It's the size of Texas, 10 foot deep, and it's a, it's a million square I've miles. seen that, yes. You know, just from all the junk, that's the sidekick. Anyway, so I saw, okay, the, the quickest thing to fix here is if you can purify your water, if I can make a very good water filter that does what Mother Nature does to water, like it condenses, it falls on the mountain, comes down the rocks, activates, you know, polishes on, on, the, um, on the sand, on the silica, it filters, it gets um, activated, it, uh, the, all the bad molecules get uh, inactivated. So I built, I could not find a, um, a filter on this planet. So I, I went to China and I designed one. I've got a 12 stage water filter in glass. So we don't have any plastic molecules in there that has even uh, boron magnets in that activate, activate the water. Cause water is very much like a, like a pillow you sleep on, a pillow can get all flat and compressed. You need to fluff, fluff out the pillow so the pillow is to sleep nicely. So the water gets compressed. If you just have plain, totally like um, 
clean, pure water that's going to go flat. It needs to bounce the molecules. You, you go up the mountain and you scoop some water from a little mountain stream. It's tantalizing. It's alive. You can feel this thing is full of minerals and full of trace elements. And those are the things you need to add to the water. So I got these 12 stages that cleans, takes all the fluoride, the chlorine, the injecticides, the pesticides, all that stuff out. It puts minerals and trace elements. Those are the cadmium, molybdenum, zinc, copper, manganese, phosphate. They put that back in there. We activate the molecules, we polish them. You drink this water, it's like, oh, I want to stay here all day and drink water. And I had to manufacture this, and it's, uh, I'm pre-selling it now. It's releasing in about six weeks. It's available. I'm doing this thing worldwide because my clients have to have clean water. Then a third of the toxins are handled. Clean water. Then clean water is important. <laughs> yeah. Clean water is a necessity. Awesome. Yes, but not, but not dead water. Clean water that's like alive. Structure, structured, stuff. alive water. Yes, great. That stuff. So I got that one. And then to handle the food is a big deal because there's 8,000 or hundreds of thousands of chemicals in food. Environment a bit more difficult. So if you put a water filter on your counter and you start filtering your water, you're already a third of your problem solved like in five seconds flat. You just now you you're going in the right direction. So that's being launched soon and we can speak about that once it's launched. So, so you're, you're selling the filters or so people can buy the filter through you? Is that yeah. the deal? It's gonna be called, uh, it, uh, Compass is my company because I guide people. So Compass, uh, Vital Mountain Water, I call it. So the product is cool. Vital Mountain cool. Water. Cool, water, awesome, awesome. Yeah. But more well, about well, that we'll, later. We'll, we'll make sure that we get we get all your contacts to make yeah, sure that yeah. that, that, that uh, we can reach all this. Great. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the other thing that that you've got is you've got your, you've got that uh, paras parasite anti parasite um, supplement. Yes, yes. So yeah. So for people to be, if you want to be healthier, or just if you want your peak performance, or you're sick and tired, or being sick and tired, or you are also got any symptoms. The way to fix it is we fix the parasites, handle the environment, so the parasite program, then we do the gut reset program, and then whatever's left symptoms, we'll handle them on their own uh, individually because they will resolve by that time. And then in the meantime, we give clean, pure water that tantalizes and activates your body, and then you're gonna be in peak performance. Whether you're 12 years old or 92, you're gonna be the best 92 that's walking around here. And you're exercising and you're getting out into the, to the sun and you're grounding and you're doing all of this together to create yes. your very best self. Yeah. Now there's one tiny little snack. I must just, let me add one more little thing here. So, you know about Udemy, that's that uh, online academy where you can do little courses. They sell millions of courses on udemy.com. And um, the statistic is that, and some courses are from $10 to $1,000. They see that 92% of people don't even start a course. They just buy it. So the thing here is that I also counsel and coach people and assign for them somebody, a coach that works with them so that I make sure that they get going and they do these things. They don't just buy it from me and sit back. I guarantee results because I know if you don't, the first guarantee is if you don't do the program, you can't get results. So the second thing is I know the program works. I just got to make sure that you do it. And if you so want accountability, accountability is a big exactly. aspect to the, to the changing and the healing of yeah. someone's body and life. Yeah, so when you do my program, you know you're going to get results because I'm 100% with you and behind you and make take you every step of the way. And that's like amazing. Yeah. Super, super exciting, Dr. Dr. Chris MD. What an amazing uh, opportunity. Thank you so much yeah, for cool. our time today. Okay, good. Let's talk again. And uh, then I'll have my websites are launching in the next week and everything. And then so, because I have to design content and get this big machine rolling, no use just popping out there and then sinking again. So it's all happening within the next seven or eight days, and then we can do all this together and check it out. Awesome. Okay, John. Thank you, yeah. sir. You're welcome. Speak again soon. Awesome. Okay.